how were pleased were you with uh, special teams this past week? Well, um, in comparison to the previous week, obviously real felt real well. You know, um, the first week, um, you know, I thought we played pretty sound, pretty hard. I thought we were prepared for the uh, second game. We didn't play well. We give give Penn State credit, but they took advantage of uh, of our errors. But last week, our kids came back. And they fought back. And they were embarrassed, and they should have been. And I was embarrassed. And they played the way uh, we expected them to play. Pat was telling us yesterday. He thinks uh, maybe the key to Quadri's big start to the series. He's just. Uh, not falling down as often. He thought he did that too often a few years ago when he rushed for a thousand yards. He could add two thousand. Is that what you're seeing from him too? Is just more light on his feet and making the right moves? Or he was a senior now and he was a freshman then. So freshmen do freshman things and they all mature at different rates. And I'm glad he's playing well. I got I got three guys that can play winning football. So I'm very fortunate for that. And he's just he's playing good football. So you know. Hopefully, hopefully he'll kill, he can continue that throughout the season. Did you expect he'd be that good this year and sort of take this job the way he has? Well, he, he's worked really hard, and, and I've said this once before. He's one of the, he's probably the smartest player I've ever been around. He could probably play almost any position on the offense and be pretty much right all the time. So when you're smart and you can see things before they happen and anticipate things and know all the the issues you have when we call a certain play, and then and that allows you to be successful. And again, a Hall is smart, and, and AJ is he's he's getting to that point where uh, it's fun having him around because you can have football conversations with him. You can talk about, you know, if we if, if, if the line says this, then what happens? And he can he can he can have a, a football discussion. And last year he couldn't, so I'm proud of him too. Are right, Darren and AJ? They understand the situation too, as far as how playing time is going to work. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> You know, like I said, you know, Hall's playing really good. Um, I need, I need, I, I need, uh, I need to play Hall a little bit more, and because uh, again, he can, he can bring a lot to the table. Take a little bit off Allison, uh, you know, because we got a long season to play. And I had a long talk with AJ. Of course, he's disappointed because he's not playing as much. And I said, look, dude, next year when, when, when you're the oldest guy in the room. By the way, I said, who's going to be the oldest guy in the room next year? He goes, you are. So, so, so I said, next year, when you're getting the majority of the rep, it's going to be Michael who's going to be upset. So, you know, those guys have seen a lot of things. And, you know, they played Georgia Tech. And they played, you know, North Carolina. So they, they know they know how to – they know what to expect. Michael got a little bit of playing time the other day. Did he show something in practice last week? Yeah, you know, we just – you know, we got those four free games. And uh, so we've got kind of a tentative plan. You know, give get those guys get their feet wet, and you never know. Two weeks down the road, I mean, someone can twist an ankle, someone can pull a hamstring, and so just get them in the game, get them a little feel, and just let them grow slowly. You know, smuggled them out there in number twenty-six. Well, you know what? That was an error on our part. He was number seven. Mm -hmm. And preseason, when we get the the roster, I go through and make sure there's no duplicates. And preseason, Starker was number forty-three, and all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second. So we got the same scenario this week because Sibley's number 23 and so is Adawu. So we got to get that fixed before we get to Chapel Hill too. Coach seemed like it had, uh, had a lot of success this year on you know misdirection plays, counters, traps, and you know how is that you know a product of the way the lines play and also your guys being patient and letting those plays develop. Well, we, we set them up. A lot of it is with the motions. Mm -hmm. You know they're chasing those jets and. You know, the line blocking is pretty simple, but it's always that safety that's filling that you, that's hard to get a hat on. And when he's chasing a jet, and we're running a jet, that's fantastic for them. But if he's chasing a jet and we're running another play, then it's not so great for them. So, you know, that's just that's just a part. You know, we, we set plays up and we do things, try to take advantage of the defense and, you know, those types of things. They only have two games on tape, but what have you noticed from Carolina's defense? They look like the same Carolina defense I've seen for the last 22 years. They're big, they can run, they can play. So, hadn't changed, you know, good Carolina football team. Wildcat, something new you guys have wanted to use more, or has that always kind of been in the in the repertoire and you just decided to You know, we've, we've, got a, we've, got, we've got a big offense, and we pick and choose um, when, it's, when, it's, when it fits, and sometimes it doesn't fit. And, 
um, we'll see if it fits there. You mentioned Sibley. Might we see a little bit more of him? I mean, I know he's been waiting his turn, got banged up a little bit. Yeah. What's his status? I think Sibley's going to have a good, good contribution with special teams. Uh, starting out, you know, let him get his feet back under him. And, you know, he's in all the meetings and he gets reps at practice. And I'm not going to take Allison and Hall out just to give Sibley reps because he's got a nice haircut. I mean, he's, you know, he's just got to get his turn when his turn comes up. Not as good as James Conner's haircut these days, though. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, Paris involved in the return game a little bit. I, you didn't get the return one, obviously, but yeah. what were you looking to see from him that you wanted to give him that opportunity? You know, Georgia Tech had a good punter, and you know, last year he had he had the tendency to out kick his covers. That gave us a chance. So going into the game, you know, you get one, statistically you get one point two returns a game, and the other day we got none, right? And the week before, we got one, and we got a penalty. And the week before, we got two. One was a three-yard, one was a 30-yard, and one was a penalty. So you get one. So we knew we we're going to get mostly fair catches, and we just wanted to, again, get him in the game, let him catch the ball in the crowd, and uh, let him operate there. And uh, we got we got plans going down the road how we can use him in certain situations. No, to return guys today. We're working on stuff along, catching balls along the sideline. That's, is yeah. that something situational for UNC or no, just something you need that's to? that's something that, you know, um, I've neglected, really. Um, you know, we talk about all those scenarios, uh, but you got to practice those scenarios. I mean, uh, we had a scenario earlier in the year where we made a fair catch and the ball hit the ground. And, uh, um, again, we, we got to practice all those scenarios and not talk about them. we got guys back there that's never been to return man until this year. And that's something that I neglected to do. I hate I did it. Um, but that's, that's what we're doing. We're trying to get every scenario possible practice. And you can practice every possible scenario that comes to mind. And next year, there will be four more scenarios that you never thought of. So that, that, that checklist just gets bigger and bigger every year. Let's go back to Quadri for a second. Do you feel like he's running at all like Connor did when he was here? I know he was kind of his mentor in that running back room. Do you see any? No, James, James did so many subtle things. You know, Allison is just the, the, the thing that we've made a big emphasis of is extending the play. And he's done a much better job at that. James did that too. James, James, you know, most people wouldn't even notice, but James does so much stuff with his offhand. You know, guy, I mean, he's using that hand to push off and club and do all those things. And so, so, you know, I, I wouldn't say he's similar to James. I mean, he's his own guy, but he's he's extending plays, and that's what we're trying to trying to get.